Alright, how's it going you guys? This is Adrian again, AZ Palau 21 is the channel name, and today I'm bringing you episode number 4 of this New Japan Pro Wrestling save on TEW 2013. Now, when we last left off, we had just finished the Super J Cup, and today I'm bringing to you the next pay-per-view. We have Power Struggle 2016. Alright, as you can see from the front page here, Kota Ibushi is still injured. I didn't really have much planned for him anyways, but without further ado, let's go into booking this show. Uh, just a quick little disclaimer that I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, every year, the New Japan does like a super junior tag tournament where they determine a number one contender for the junior tag titles around every summer sometime. And so if you want to take a, a look at it, bring it up towards the middle here. If you want to take a look at it, here it is. Uh, just eight teams in a single elimination tournament kind of thing. So yeah, and <laughs> keep in mind what uh what I had uh had keep in mind what I had uh, said in the last episode about the whole Kozla Beretta thing. So they are going to be a tag team now, and uh, I basically just mashed together their previous two tag teams names together. So now they are called um Forever Rapongi, I believe it is. Yeah, Kozla and Beretta Forever Rapongi. Uh, so they went up against Liger, Jushin Liger, and Taiji Ishimori. Taiji Ishimori I've basically just been using to put people over because he can work really good in matches. So put Liger and Taiji in that match, and it got an okay rating. But I had Kozlov and Beretta go over. And then I found out that Murafuji and Bushi, who's obviously in the um, IDG, or IDJ, I think, and or Gobanables de Tapon, or whatever it's called, they can be really good as a tag team, Murafuji and Bushi. So I had them, you know, uh, make a tag team, very impromptu, and I just decided to call it Marabushi. And I had them take on the kingdom. Uh, th these all happened on house shows. The only thing that's going to show is the semifinals and the finals. So and then you had the Wolves take on Red Dragon in a real good match. I made it a 20-minute match, and it got like an 82 rating. Just, yeah, just, just so I can get a house show rating up. And then I had... um. Uh, Inner City Machine Guns take on the team of David Finley Jr. and Tajiri, who I signed on a contract. Just, you know, a little nostalgia act to come in every now and again. So, as you can see here, we have the Wolves taking on the Inner City Machine Guns. And we have Forever Rapongi taking on Marabushi. And in the finals, we're going to have Forever Rapongi taking on the Wolves. And I'll let you guys decide, or I'll let you guys guess, I should say who's going to come out on top in that final match. But without further ado, let's book the rest of Power Struggle 2016, starting with the main event of the evening, the IWGP heavyweight champion Bobby Roode taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke coming off that victory against Austin Aries at the last pay-per-view. Austin Aries, of course, being in the Impact Squad stable that Bobby Roode is more or less the leader of. So... Main event of the evening, so you know it's going to go on for 25 minutes. We'll put this one at. Heavyweight championship is on the line, and we are going to have Bobby Roode retain once again. Um, we're going to have it be a slow build match. It's going to be great, and uh, I have all the faith in the world in this match in Nakamura and Bobby Roode, but I don't want to take that title off of Bobby just yet. I have the G1 Climax coming up, and I'm not sure if I want to have him take it all the way to Wrestle Kingdom. Um, I'm not exactly so sure what I want to do just yet. But I know New Japan likes to book like uh, years ahead of time, but that's not what I'm about. I'm booking in the moment, and my gut tells me that Bobby Roode needs to beat Shinsuke Nakamura. So that's going to be for the heavyweight title. Roode will retain in the main events of Power Struggle. And so next up, we have AJ Styles versus CM Punk, a match that should have happened at the last pay-per-view, but because of some scheduling difficulties with Punk, it had to go on on this show. So uh, it started off a little fishy for CM Punk because when he had first debuted, he got like a 50 overall <laughs> segment rating because he can't speak Japanese. And so I had him in a couple of matches on some house shows just to try to get his overness, you know, up a little bit more. So I had him beat Carl Anderson initially, you know, his member of the Bullet Club. 54 overall. I, I got a little worried. I was like, well, maybe CM Punk isn't translating as well. And so then I had him beat Kenny Omega in the next week. 
And I figured, okay, he's getting a little better. Maybe his overness is just taking time. And then he pulled out an 89 rating out of Bobby Lashley sometime, somehow. And you, you guys all know how I've been having my differences with Bobby Lashley because he can't work very well in long matches. The thing is, this was an 11-minute match, so I'm torn as to whether I want to give them a lot of time or not. Keep in mind, Punk is 37 years old. His stamina says 85, but he hasn't been doing very well in the long matches I've been giving him. So I'm not going to give them all the time in the world. I'm going to give them 18 minutes, and it's going to be for the Intercontinental title. But CM Punk is going to come out as the new Intercontinental Champion. And... um. I'm hoping this does really well. I hope, it, I think 75, if I if it gets a 75 or higher, I think I'll be really, really okay with it. But we want to keep style strong and um, get ready for that. The rematch, because the rematch is, is going to be for like another two months because New Japan and TEW, it's weird because like there's times where they'll have like a month off. So... Yeah, the rematch isn't going to be for a while. So in the next episode, I'm probably going to be going over the G1 Climax. Uh, I'll be going over the brackets and probably, you know, telling you how every match is going or something like that. But yeah, uh, CM Punk is going to become the new Intercontinental Champion in this match. All right, so going on to the next one, we have Time Splitters and the Young Bucks for the Junior Tag Titles. All right, not going to give them all the time in the world. 13 minutes should be enough. And the Young Bucks are going to get back their junior tag titles. Uh, Alex Shelley has been kind of a hothead lately just because they have the junior tag titles and he's been wanting main event pushes and everything. And it's just been too much. And not just that, but the, the Young Bucks need to have these titles. Um, I could have easily had time splitters take it, but Young Bucks were always going to be the champions at the end of the day. So uh, we're going to have them go all out in this match. And this is going to be the opening the opening match. And, yep, the Young Bucks are going to get back their title. Oh, I should probably put that title on the line. Yep. All right. And this is going to be the first match of the evening, I said. Oh, wait. Or did I have the Wolves and ICMG? Yeah, I think that would would be a better opening match. So I'm going to change this so that it's just an all-out match. And we can put it right between it, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. All right, next booking we got going on here. All right, uh, this is not going to be very far up the card because I did not do a very good job of booking this because TMDK just cannot get over in this in this promotion. No matter who I put them up against, let's see what I tried to do this past month to get TMDK over, Mikey Nichols. Um, so let's see here. Uh, in July... Okay, you can see in June I started booking them. They have not... They have, they've only lost one match since June, and they still aren't that over. Their best match came at Best of the Super Juniors, and that was in a throwaway match. So let's see what I had them do. Uh, I had them beat uh, Bullet Club, beat some no-names, beat Killer Elite Squad twice, That and it got <laughs> 58 each time. Uh, that was Kingdom defeating Rapongi Vice and TMDK. I had them team up with ICMG, and they still didn't do well. Uh, I had them beat Killer Eight Squad again, and I had them team up with Matt Sydal and MVP, and they did not do good. This is going to be a terrible match, and I know this. Um, so I'm not even going to bother. It's going to be an eight-minute match. It's going to be for the tag titles. But Bullet Club are going to retain simply for the fact that TMDK just aren't getting over. Uh, we'll have it be an open match, but uh, uh, I, I've not. I don't. I don't think it's my fault either. That's the thing. They just are not getting over for whatever reason, and so that's going to do that. And we have Godo and Shibata going at it. 
Of course, they were a tag team. They were going for the tag titles, but couldn't get it done on two separate occasions. So now they're deciding to go their own way. And they're going to do it with a bang with a... How are they stamina-wise? Stamina 79. I think he can go 81. Nah, I think 13 minutes will be plenty for them. And we're going to have Hiroki Goto go over in this because... <sighs> Hiroki Goto is going to be the next one to challenge for the title, and he will job out to Bobby Roode. Uh, I just don't see Goto being a champion at this point. Um, Shibata, n neither him neither. Um, they can go all out. Decisive win for Goto. But yeah, he'll he'll challenge for the title, but he will not win it off of Roode, I can tell you that. So Goto and Shibata, they'll have their match. And let's see what else we have going here. Impacts, yes. This is the number one contenders match for the tag titles, which is exciting for me because the winners of this match are going to win the tag titles at the next pay-per-view. And it is going to be the team of Austin Aries and Nick Aldis or Magnus from TNA. And they're going to win this match. Uh, we beat Kill Elite Squad and Tenkoji. All right, let's see here. Sorry about that. I think my alarm is going off. All right, so they're going to win that match. And next we have Tanahashi and Naito. So over the last couple of weeks on some house shows, I've been having them go at it in six-man tags and whatnot. And I think right now is the best time to pull the trigger on taking that title off of Tanahashi and trying to get Naito over too because I had him lose in the semifinals of the Super J Cup, was it? Yeah, it was a Super J Cup. And um, he did really well, e even in his loss. So I'm going to reward Naito by giving him this title win over Tanahashi. And it's going to be a good match. And Naito is going to come out with the win and be become the new never open weight champion. And Tanahashi will get his rematch at the next pay per view. Uh, Tanahashi is not happy with the booking of the match. Well, that means we have to keep him strong. All right, let's see if he likes it. And he's okay. All right. He's okay with that. And finally, we have Jay Lethal versus Roderick Strong, a match I'm really looking forward to, a match that should do rather well. And I'm giving them a lot of time, too, because these guys can go. Junior heavyweight title is on the line. And Jay Lethal... Nope. Oh, Jay Lethal doesn't need to be kept strong, brother. Roderick Strong needs to be kept strong, ironically. All right. Slow build. Decisive win. And Jay Lethal... No, actually. I Yes, I remember. It was going to be a tainted win because... And I forgot to mention this, but I have bought out... The company of stardom and it is an all women's promotion and i did not know that until i bought them out so when i went to go look at the assets that they had that i could possibly use when i bought them out there was one name that came to my mind and one name that popped out and his name is truth martini truth martini is actually jay lethal's real life manager in roh right now they have the whole House of Truth going on right now, the Book of Truth. It's all good stuff if you aren't watching ROH. So Roderick Strong is going to be attacked. Well, not attacked. Let's just say distraction. He's going to be distracted by Truth Martini, and that's going to lead to a lethal injection. And Jay Lethal is going to be your new junior heavyweight champion. All right. And that is going to do that. That is way over three hours. Let's see analysis-wise who I'm not using. Kyle O'Reilly and Okada and Omega and Seidel and Lashley. Uh, these are all people that I would probably want to be using. So off the top of my head, I can see Seidel and Omega having a pretty good match. And I could just make that a number one contenders match or something. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think I can do that. 
Or I could throw in Okada and O'Reilly somehow, but I can't, I can't do that. Uh, O'Reilly, Blashley, Elgin, uh, Johnny Gargano, no, because ICMG, ooh, what do I do here? What do I do here? Minoru Tanaka, hmm, all right, well, I don't need to use all of these guys, which kind of sucks because I, I really should be using most of them, but I, I really don't. And uh, Kenny Omega, I need to use. I, I need to use Kenny Omega, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him in that match against Matt Seidel. And it's going to be the number one contendership match for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. All right, so we have Matt Seidel against Kenny Omega. And just a 12-minute match. And Kenny Omega is going to come out on the win. Open match. We're going to have him go all out. And it's going to be tainted because some Bullet Club members are going to interfere on his part. So interference. We're going to have Matt Seidel get attacked by... Mm, let's say Cody Hall. Yeah, Cody Hall. All right. Okie dokie. And that's going to get moved back quite some. All right. I still need to use Okada somehow. And I think I could just put him up against Lashley and call it a day. Or book some kind of six-man tag. Yeah. Some kind of six-man tag. I should probably bring that down just a little bit. Just to make room. Okay. So, six-man tag time. This is New Japan after all. So, who is not working so far? Red Dragon and the Kingdom. So let's see. Red Dragon. Uh, Liger and Tiger? No, I don't think I, can. I should do that. Well, let's see. Okada has to be working. Okada has to be working. Mm, who can I put? No, I'm not going to do a, another Bullet Club thing. AJ, not AJ Styles. Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and who? Michael Elgin. I could use Michael Elgin in this. Bobby Lashley. That wouldn't make much sense, would it? Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Lashley? Bobby Lashley is in the Impact Squad. And as far as Fish and O'Reilly are not, so... Cardano, Juice... Yeah, let's go ahead and throw Michael Elgin in there. Er, let's no, let's find someone who can eat a pin. Actually, Sheldon Benjamin. No, Michael Elgin will do. It'd be good to give Jushin and and Tiger Mask a win on a pay per view too. So we're gonna have Okada take the victory here. Open match and decisive and. Chances are they give it to Michael Elgin the pinfall. All right, 13 matches in total on this card. Quite, quite the show. And let's just check to see what's going on. Uh, Bobby Lashley does not have to be working on this show. So, Power Struggle 2016. Let's get it started with our opening match. So, the Wolves versus the Inner City Machine Guns did okay. Not as well as I had hoped it would do. But lack of selling apparently hurt the match. So, the Wolves move on to the finals after Eddie Edwards defeated Ricochet. And our next match is coming up. And that did a lot well, a lot better than I thought it would. So, Forever Rapongi defeated Marabushi in 12 minutes. Uh, by pinfall with a Dude Buster DDT. 
And apparently, Marufuji did really well. All right, so moving on to the next match. Matt Seidel versus Kenny Omega. Wow, 85 overall. Kenny Omega and Matt Seidel put on a very good match. Kenny Omega getting the victory after interference from Cody Hall, like I had hoped. And that's, this was a very good match. All right, and then... The Young Bucks win back their junior tag titles with an 81-rated match after a more bang for your buck, and they take back their tag titles. All right. 81 rating on that match. All right. The number one contenders match for the tag titles, the regular tag titles, had the Impact Squad 1 team of Austin Aries and Nick Aldis beat Killer Elite Squad and 10 Cozy. 74 overall. Not the best, but hey. We're just trying to get Austin Aries and Nick Aldis over. All right. That throwaway six-man tag match with Okada in it, 79 overall. Not bad. Moving on to our more main events, more or less. Uh, we had the Bullet Club beat the Mighty Don't Kneel. Eh, you know, TMDK weren't that over, but this match was probably saved by the Bullet Club members. 66 on that. The Goto and Shibata match had a good showing. 83 overall. I like it. I like it. 83 on that one. Goto with the victory. Naito coming out with the win and winning the never open weight title against Tanahashi. 78 overall rating. Not the best, but it, it'll have to do. And they'll have a rematch and they'll probably do better in it. Forever Rapongi winning the Super Junior Tag Tournament and thus winning. A championship match against the Young Bucks. All right. And it looks like they're going to be getting over. So the impromptu tag team finally with some glory with a roll up pin after Rocky Romero hits one of the uh, one of the wolves, too, I should add. All right. So not the best showing in this junior heavyweight title match that I had hoped for. But they did do okay, an 82 rating on this, with Jay Lethal winning the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title after a distraction from Truth Martini. So they'll have their rematch, and Jay Lethal more or less a heel now. All right, so AJ Styles defeated by CM Punk in 18 minutes. Not the, not the great I was hoping for CM Punk on this one, so not sure what I'm going to have him do going forward, but... Your new Intercontinental Champion is CM Punk. 80 overall rating. Not too shabby. And the main event, Bobby Roode versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Not the best not the best main event in the world, but it'll do. Shinsuke Nakamura doing the job for Roode. 85 rating on that match in 24 minutes with a payoff. And Bobby Roode is still your IWGP heavyweight champion in front of 18,500 people. And that is going to do it for this show. That was Power Struggle. Uh, 84 rating on the pay-per-view. It says Beretta was used too much. I don't care. He's he's going to challenge for the junior tag titles now. Increased our popularity in 33 regions, regions, I should say. I still consider it to be a very successful pay-per-view. Let me know what you think of the card in the comments below, you guys. Let me know what kind of matches you want to see. Let me know what kind of wrestlers you want me to sign or if you want any of these guys to go. And um, uh, just let me know what you're thinking about the series so far. So be sure to leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at azpalayo 21 And I will, and I hope you guys have a good day.